Hey there, friends. This is Bill McDonald, the reading and writing doctor. This video is brought to you by special request of one of you in the writing club, in the reading club. Uh, it was a difficult question for English one students in reading. And I decided to help the teacher out by using one of my materials that kind of breaks things down in order. I call it my step-by-step -step sequence ladder. Get it? Step ladder. Life happens at full speed, but reading and writing happen in slow motion. So when you use my acronym ARMS to say, actors remember for story sequence arms actors remember more story sequence if we slow the paragraph down that they ask us about and see it by steps on a ladder which could easily be done on lined paper on the test when your students ask for it, make sure you give them line paper and blank paper so that you can utilize these simple strategies on test day for kids who struggle with the order of things, how to break them down in order. So let me go ahead and share the screen with you. This is the question that the teacher wanted guidance with and uh, she seemed to feel that the question number didn't quite match up with what was in her uh, test guide. So regardless of the fact, uh, the question is here in the lower portion, at, right here, and the paragraphs that it's asking about are right here above because typically you would see the key paragraph or P passage before you'd see the Q, the question. So I asked the teacher to include both and I'm going to have to have you look at me in the corner. There's something I had to in fur rubbing my fur, I had to read between the lines because something that was inside the paragraph, a certain person that was talking must have been mentioned before these paragraphs, but I can tell from the last sentence that uses synonyms for the correct answer, which answer is the most correct because it's the one that best supports the details that are written in the paragraph. So when we read the question, what I think is important to always do is have some sort of a structure that your kids will follow, and mine is read the question, then read the section that it's asking you about. Underline and label everything in the question and the section it's being asked about. Begin to evaluate the strategies that you've been taught so that you can execute one of them and begin to eliminate answers until you find the one that you're going to select. Now this year, this past year, it's always been one answer that you can select and only one, but starting next year, part of the constructed type responses is uh, one of the answer choices is gonna be more than one correct answer. So as I've been making my practice tests for my teachers I work with, I 
they use an online program that allows or requires the students to select multiple answers uh, in order to get the answer correct. So, so we shall read the question and underline and label anything important in paragraphs. So we would make a little bracket here around paragraphs eight through 12. What key idea? Okay. So in other words, you have a little head there and you have an idea just like you have two eyes, they're asking for one idea based on paragraphs 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. The details of a forest bathing experience. Okay. So apparently, because the question is telling you a little mini title of that section, then you might want to go ahead and write that either above or below uh, forest bathing experience. All right, that's what we're about to read in paragraphs eight through 12. Okay. So as you can see there, it, it's got dialogue. It has uh, the person who's talking that the chokas in tone, that's called the tag, the person who's speaking and how they're saying it. Then we have a quick emotional response. It felt like a meditation retreat. So basically he's kind of, the, the person uh, who's telling this story in first person, past tense, because you can see it here, is telling you what he thinks. Oh man, this is a meditation retreat. Took me a few minutes to clear out the clutter in my brain and tune into the natural world. Now this comma right here bothered me because whenever I teach people that if you only have two things, okay, joined by an and, it took a few minutes to clear out the clutter in my brain and tune into the natural world. Well, that comma that was right there should not be there because only two things are being joined. So I don't know if that was a mistake written by the state or just the author and they decided not to mess with the grammar. But when you're only joining two things, you do not need a comma with the conjunction. Then we have this choke as Bradley talking again. So he's opening his mouth. So one thing you can think about is what actually came out of his mouth. And so what I drew was a mouth. with some quotation marks. We're, they're also known as dimples in your mouth if you have them. So I'm going to infer something here that this Chokas Bradley person is a forest guide. I didn't get to read the sentences before, or in this case, the paragraphs before, but apparently if your students didn't read the paragraphs before paragraph eight, which is mentioned in the question, then they're going to have to do like I did and infer that this person speaking is a forest guide. And I'm only able to infer that because suddenly somebody comes out of nowhere and tells you some information about forest guides, okay? Helping you here and apparently that's why Bill McDonald has a forest behind him because the question was about being in a forest. So let's move on to the next one. 
Chalkis Bradley talking, Mr. Forest Guide, when you open your eyes, imagine your, your as in you are seeing the world for the very first time. After, uh, forward, after I opened my eyes, comma, the green looked a lot greener. And I began to see things I hadn't noticed before. All right, teachable moment of instruction. You want to write in your notes. T M I. Even though this is not a grammar question, one thing that you can do to test if the and makes sense in a place where it's put is to cover it up with your finger or something. If the sentence that's remaining makes sense, then you're allowed to start with that conjunction. So let's see how it sounds. I began to see things I hadn't noticed before. That is a complete thought. So it's completely okay to have that and there. So the next thing is we have a colon right here. A colon is not stopping the sentence completely but a colon is slowing the sentence down. And so if you teach your students to look at colons, let me move that over just a hair, to where the colon is, Let's see if I can do that. Sorry, I'm trying to select it and move it. There it is, okay. Colon, slow down. Whenever you have a colon, what you're saying is, hey, the whole, the independent clause is finished, and we're going to follow it with a list or a, some items in a series. Let's see if that's true. The flutter of birds, comma. The ripple of the water, comma. The swaying of trees, period. Now, the comma, the Oxford comma rule is in effect here that you don't necessarily ha have to, they kind of say uh, in some programs, you can substitute the, the last, you can either put the comma or the and or both, uh, that Oxford comma could be just an and without a comma. And so I prefer at least to have the and there, but it's the last thing in the list. Uh, to me, this comma makes it sound a little rough. So this is what I call a teachable moment of instruction where you quickly kind of give a guide about something. And so the, all of this, all of this paragraph was just a response to what I believe the forest guide told us to do. So he says something, we do it. He says something else, we do it. So all this is related to the forest guide. And so if it's supposed to support one idea, it has to be the one idea about everything, not about some things. So it's sort of like saying, I've got to take this paragraph, this section, I'm sorry, and decide what's my central idea, what's my key, what's my big idea regarding these things that in this forest bathing experience. So the last one, is where it kind of gives an answer. A forest guide helps you here, not there, says Amos Clifford, a former wilderness guide with a master's degree in counseling and the founder of the Association of Nature and Forest Therapy, the organization that certifies the guides. So this is uh, the guy saying what the purpose of the guides is for. They're there to help you here. Whereas here, in the forest. So as we 
analyze that last sentence right there, that last paragraph was basically the answer hidden. So let me stop sharing for a second and I'm gonna take you over to my document camera where I used my sequence ladder, my step-by-step -step sequence ladder. And I broke down the section that they asked us about into steps on a ladder that could be easily placed on lines of a paper. And why are these little circles on the side? Because I was imagining slowing life down and using my storytelling remote different buttons where you tell a story in the form of fiction or literary nonfiction, or sometimes a poem is in the form of a story. A play is a lot of dialogue uh, and people doing things one after the other. So this comes in real handy, this little narrative remote. And basically I slowed that section down to break it apart. And so somebody talking there, the guide, I fast forward because it said it took a few minutes to clear the clutter of my brain and, and tune into the natural world. We don't need that comma. Then he said something again, apparently the forest guide. After I opened my eyes, the green looked a lot greener. I was seeing things. That's a, a different kind of voice. The senses, uh, there's a saying that says, don't judge a person till you've walked a mile in their shoes. Inside their shoes are their toes, their voice, their thoughts, their opinions their emotions, the five senses, or the things that they might say. And so your voice is who you are inside your shoes, where your toes are at. So he lets us use, he uses his senses to let us see what he's seeing, a flutter of birds, the ripple of water, the swaying of trees. Why? Because the guide from the forest told him to do that. So all of a sudden, the hidden answer, hidden because of synonyms, a forest guide helps you here, not there, says Amos Clifford, a former wilderness guide. So the keyword helps you here is important. So when I go back to the passage and share that uh, portion of the screen that we were looking at, it says, Forest guides, what are forest guides? Forest guides in this case are the subject. Is this whole section about forest guides? Yes, because either a forest guide is telling us something or we're responding to, to his instructions. So when they said that he helps us when you help somebody, it's just a synonym for someone who supports and assists with the process. What process? The forest bathing experience process. Okay. So this is going to be the best answer. And so now I've just got to help you understand why the other ones are wrong. It's necessary to breathe deeply to achieve a state of relaxation. Well, breathing deeply, when, I'm, when I look over here to my sequence ladder, only step eight talked about breathing. So if you're gonna say that it's a key idea, it better have more to do with the entire ladder, not just one step of the ladder. So we can't pick this one because it doesn't have enough information about the entire section. So it's better to eliminate that one. The process of forest bathing, that's the question there, is more effective than meditating. Well, the student only mentioned meditating in the same paragraph, in paragraph eight, 
you see it, it felt like a meditation retreat. They weren't comparing. If you say that um, when you're doing a compare and contrast, every time that you see something like that, say, okay, um, here's forest bathing. Right there. If you say it's more effective than something, what you're doing is a compare and a contrast. Let me see if I can extend that out. Whoops, not that way. Okay. If I compare more effective than something else, that means that the entire idea of the section was comparing meditation to forest bathing. And the whole section was about forest bathing. Only one little dum-dum, only one little detail was about meditating. So I can't select that one. Last one. The colors uh, and sights of the forest change when forest bathing. Those are true. But because of this word right here, what the idea by the details in the whole section, you can't come up with a key idea, a main idea of a whole section by only choosing something that happens on one of the fingers when we drew those fingers. Basically, that was step, the colors changing and the sights changing. That was only number 11. So when you look and see, well, B, C, and D only have one paragraph and letter A had to do with every single paragraph from 8 through 12, then that's the best answer and the one that you should pick because the subject of each sentence and each paragraph was forest guides and how they help you through this supposedly uh, unusual forest bathing experience. So to my teacher friend, that's how I would do that one. I hope that it was helpful to you and that um, you'll pick uh, some of these ideas and use them in your classroom to help your students. Um, just remember the key idea is sort of like the main idea, the big idea. And again, that last sentence was basically saying the answer. It just, instead of using the word hidden, it said it assists and even the word guide means to help so to assist means to help and whatever that other word was that um let me look and see um i don't have the question but um they were all synonyms of help and since that's what the question said then that's the part that was true so do me a favor and share or tag one of your reading teacher friends very simple here just use the lines on a piece of paper as a step-by-step -step sequence ladder and come up with a little graphic organizer that can be a uh, narrative remote where you do the opposite of life happening at full speed and reading and writing happen in slow, happening in slow motion one detail at a time and that's how we were able to place them on the step-by-step -step sequence ladder so my friend up there hopefully that was this was helpful to you uh yes sometimes questions are not fair but the key idea was the key words in that section and the idea of helping was being done throughout the entire time so uh hopefully that helps that teacher and a couple other thousand of you out there who watched this. Take care and God bless.